Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm an absolute fan of the teachings of Bern Hogarth. So in today's video, we're going to be drawing a couple of the head and neck anatomy shots from his book on dynamic anatomy, pages 120 and 121 based upon the print that I'm using. Uh, so I hope you'll join me and without further ado, let's get to drawing. Okay, so with these particular illustrations, I was really liking the way that he explains the uh, sternocleidomastoid, so the big muscle that goes from behind the ear down to the center of the collarbones. And then from the next illustration, the trapezius in relationship to that, that sternocleido. So it, it's just a, a good couple illustrations where I think he really pinpoints those areas that I was looking for. So I was flipping through a couple of my anatomy books and I, I generally go from Bern Hogarth uh, to Bridgman to uh, Roberto Asti. I've got a few others, but those are some of the primary ones that I use right now. But I just want you to be aware that even though I'm a big uh, you know, fan of, of Burns work here, and I tell a lot of people to go right to this, that I do use other resources. In fact, I uh, and also that coupled with uh, photographs. So whenever I find a shot that it looks uh, like something I wanna draw, I stop and I study it. And all that together culminates into your style and your, your understanding about a certain area of the body. And just when you think you got it figured out, there'll be a certain angle or tilt or twist and you feel like you got to start all over again. So be ready for that as well. So the thing that I like particularly well about this one, if you notice those little lines that look like uh, diagrams or wireframe lines that uh, are angular and they point up to the center of those two primary muscle groups, um, I think that those are so helpful and informative and I really like the way he implemented those. Now keep in mind in his book he also uses colored pencil to bring that out even further. Uh, but those lines to me are very important to pay attention to so that you get a better idea of where the peak of that muscle would be and therefore how to shade it. So a lot of times when we don't understand how to shadow something it's because we're drawing maybe too much of the perimeter of it and we don't understand the inner form of the area enough and then you know how are you going to shade it if you don't understand the form right so that's where repetition is your best friend so you can draw a head and a neck a couple times and be like yeah i think i got it it came out pretty good yeah yeah i'm a good artist i can stop here but that's not really the way it works in fact what i've noticed and i've drawn for many many years is that i have to revisit things that i thought i was good at that i thought i knew and understood uh, I make time to go back and draw them again, and that's what I'm doing here. Like, I've drawn head and necks plenty of times for my characters, but I can tell you right now, after drawing this, I still felt like I learned something. I felt like the way that the, uh, the sternocleidomastoid tapers out and bulges to the middle and then comes down to what looks like two muscles, but it's obviously one, I felt like the description of that in this illustration showed me something. I also felt like uh, by following along with these that I learned a little bit more about the way the trapezius connect, especially on the back of the head. So again, I can sit there and say, well, I've drawn them plenty of times. I've got this. You know, I can, I can draw it from my imagination and I can come pretty close, but I have to always remember to sort of empty my cup, right? Realize that I don't know it all and that I still have a lot of room for growth and revisiting these studies helps me to connect with that. And, and uh, again, pay special attention to something I might need to uh, twist or move around. Like a lot of times it's, I feel like you're just nudging a certain form around. Like you kind of got it and then all of a sudden you draw it again and something clicks. You're like, wow, I just needed to, you know, raise that line or that shadow a little bit more lower to whatever and it looks a, a lot better. That's, that's all you're doing. You're slowly adjusting the work and getting better and better. And that's why you can always look back at your old work. Well, not always, but for the most part, you can always look back at your old work and go, wow, I've come so far. I've learned so much. Uh, it's not that you were doing horrible when you first started. Uh, you had to be somewhat good or you probably wouldn't have continued on. But it's because you're each time you revisit something, you get a little better, a little better. You keep nudging around, maneuvering it. And then that shows uh, really well um, in retrospect. So I also like the way he does the pectoral muscles. Uh, he really shows kind of a rounded definition to the uh, break in the anatomy. Uh, now, a lot of people will say that his over-stylized representations are too much. I've heard this said a lot in the comic industry. 
Uh, different comic artists will, it seems like they either like Bridgman or they like Hogarth. I'm not like that. I like, I like multiple sources of information so that I can really get a, uh, you know, a big picture kind of effect of, of what it is. Like, especially with artists because they over stylize. And even if they don't, you know, if you don't consider over stylize, they're going to have some uh, shift in what it might really look like. Okay, unless you're looking at the photo reference they truly studied from, if they used any at all, then you don't know what transformations their style might have, you know, taken with that that, um, that study. Uh, so again, I like to use multiple sources and even compare that against photo reference. So with this particular uh, angle, I thought this was very helpful because for one, it really, I like what he did with the over angular effect. I almost felt like this looked a little bit more like a, a Bridgman study. And I like how he described the uh, zygomatic bone, even though I feel like I placed both of them too low in comparison to the ear. I actually just feel like I placed the ear too high uh, on this one. But that coupled with uh, the relationship of the, the neck muscles, I found this one to be very helpful to draw. In fact, I almost wanted to take this right here and turn it into a, a superhero shot. <laughs> like I felt like it was just a cool shot for the book. And I always struggle with these slightly uh, tilted away face shots. So you can bet I'm going to catalog that in my mind and say, okay, when I need to draw this particular shot, I'll just pick this one up, do a you know overlay and draw draw whatever character over top. Uh, it's always good to recycle your work when you can and not not have to uh, you know draw it over or you know you just look at it and draw it again. It's not a big deal. But this was a I felt like this was a very helpful one. And again, I, I want to stress that these books are my go-to when I feel like I'm either stagnating in my art or I'm, I'm feeling less than enthused or less creative. I find these to be so helpful. And it's funny, a lot of times I do all these other things trying to get motivated and, and creative. And this is an easy one. Just go pick up the book from the shelf, you know, grab your favorite book. For this, this is a big one for me. This is a bit of nostalgia and uh, just good education, good learning and, and um, something that I should always want to pick up and repeat. But for me, there's a bit of nostalgia involved, which I think helps even more. Uh, these were some of the first books that I ever picked up to improve my skill set as an artist, primarily as a comic artist. So I had heard Todd McFarlane talk in one of his videos, and he mentioned the Bern Hogarth book. So what do I do? I run right out and I buy them. And luckily, it was a very natural process. So for instance, you pick up a book and you might start, start drawing from it, and maybe something clicks for you, maybe it doesn't. For me, the Bern Hogarth books clicked. I felt good about it. I felt a, a natural progression in my work. So I was excited to keep going. Uh, now, some people will tell you, no, those books aren't the, the best books and you should go with uh, Bridgman or you should go with, uh, you know, whoever, right? And so you got all these different ideas or they, ha I'm sorry, they have a very specific idea of what's right and what's wrong. And now, for me, I think that's kind of just a little bit telling, right? It's just showing that they're, they're in a bit of their own tunnel vision. We're all so very different that different books are going to resonate differently with each of us. That's just the way it is. You might need to learn a specific thing from Hogarth, and you might learn a very uh, different set of uh, skills from from uh, Bridgman, and and on and on. I mean, so to me, it's like get as much of the information in front of you as you can, study it often, and watch your skills develop. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. More on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.